Good morning. Welcome to St. Joseph's Catholic Church in downtown Wilmington. Today is the fifth, fifth Sunday of Easter. Please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. Please stand and sing in the beauty of holiness, hymn number 456. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So great to be with you here this morning. The sun is finally shining. We're going to dry out, have some hot Florida weather, and put on our short sleeves and shorts and enjoy a little bit of the beauty of summer as well on this great day of the resurrection that Jesus has gifted us with, and so today we do gather um, as God's people um, with hearts full of joy, ready to worship him. Yeah. And so today our mass is going to be offered for Leon Antoine and Barbara A. Duran. And today as well, we offer up in our prayers um, the people who are suffering now in Buffalo. And for yeah. those of you who aren't aware, there, unfortunately there was another mass shooting and 10 people um, were killed and there's three others injured. And so today we pray for the eternal repose of the souls of those who had died because of that gun violence. And then also in addition to that, for God's healing graces for those who are, are fighting to recover um, from those injuries. We ask for God's peace and consolation for their families and for um, the town, for the city of Buffalo um, that has been disrupted by this evil. Um, in addition to that, we also, of course, as we have been praying here for our city in Wilmington, and we pray for an end to gun violence, and we pray for an end to all shootings and the taking 
of innocent lives. And so as we come here as a Christian people and we count on the Lord, you know, what can we do to bring an end to this? Well, what we can do to bring an end to moments like that is to do what we are doing here today. When we change lives and Jesus Christ rules over hearts, killing other people is an impossibility. So right here, what we're doing today is the solution that we need and our nation needs. I mean, it needs Jesus more than ever. And so today, might we receive the Lord and then receiving the Lord, go out and spread the Lord um, to those who, who need um, who need change in their own lives, um, to be able to be those who love and do not hate. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, 
bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the King of God. They appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting, commanded them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. When they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia, after proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commenced, commanded to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelations. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the front throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart, hear your lips, and find the gospel of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only for a little while longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In celebrating Jesus' resurrection, we celebrate his plan for all of us, for all of creation, to renew it. And that's exactly what St. John the Apostle saw in his vision, which is recorded in the book of Revelation. He reports to us and to every human being, Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Jesus' purpose, Jesus' mission, is to redeem, to restore, and as he says at the end of our reading today, to make all things new, which is such a marvelous message for us as human beings and for us as Christians to take custody of. Because what does that mean? Well, it means that the broken world that we live in, that we're frustrated with, is going away. It means that my broken mind that can't remember what I'm supposed to do is going to go away. It means my broken body that can't get out of bed in the morning and fights disease is going away. It means all of those relationships that I have that aren't the best and that cause me anxiety and pain, they too are going away. (laughs) Not in such a way that God is going to eliminate them, but God is going to renew them. He's going to renew us. 
He's going to renew our minds. He's going to renew our souls. He's going to renew our bodies. He's going to renew all of creation. What does Jesus do? He doesn't make some things new. He makes all things new. Amen. Amen. And so you and I, we have everything to look forward to in our faith in Jesus Christ. Because God is going to restore and he's going to redeem and he's going to replace everything with that latest and greatest model that lasts actually for all of eternity. And so with such a great promise before us as Christians, we want to make sure that we take custody of that, that we own that, and furthermore, that we receive that. And one of the things that Jesus teaches us today in our gospel reading is about how we can center ourselves to ensure that we're moving in the right direction, that we're going to enjoy what God promises to deliver for those who are faithful. Today in our gospel, he gives his disciples, and ultimately you and me, a new commandment. A very simple commandment, a very powerful commandment. He says, I give you a new commandment, love. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. And you will know that you belong to me that you are a Christian, that you are part of God's family. How? Well, Jesus explains how we can ensure that we're going to enjoy what God enjoys. Newness, greatness, goodness, beauty, love for all of eternity. How? He says, this is how. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love. Love for one another. So if we focus on anything else in our life, the primary thing that we should be preoccupied about is how. How well am I loving? Because Jesus says love is what it's all about. So what exactly is love? Well, the technical definition of love, of God's love, is to desire the good of the other for the sake of the other. To desire the good of the other for the sake of the other. What it means is, is that when I encounter another human being, I want what's best for them. I want what's truly good for them. And I'm going to invest myself in that. Why? Not because I get anything out of it. God's love is a selfless love. It's an unconditional love. It does not seek to find any type of self-reward or gratification out of it. We love like God loves simply because we can. Because we can do it, we will do it. We desire the good of the other for the sake of the other. We just want to make this person a better person. And that's what selfless love is all about. That's what we saw on Good Friday, right? When we see Jesus Christ show and demonstrate for us the ultimate act of love, what true love looks like, giving your life for another person, where is the personal benefit? Well, when we look at the cross of Jesus Christ as he agonizes in his crucifixion, what does Jesus get? He gets a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of anguish, a whole lot of personal torment. His body writhes in distress. His mind, we can't even begin to imagine the type of anxiety and pressure that he internally is experiencing at that moment. When Jesus suffers and dies on the cross for the salvation of the human race, for my salvation and your salvation, what does Jesus personally get out of it? Nothing, nada, zip, zilch, zero. In fact, he gets the exact opposite of that. He gets pain and suffering for love. And so Jesus on the cross shows us what God's love is all about. Love is completely disinterested. It's not interested in the self. It doesn't care about me. Why? Because it's all about you. How can I bless you? How can I help you? How can I make your life better, not mine? And so we're challenged. We're challenged to embrace 
true love and to live God's love, which is desiring the good of the other for the sake of the other. Such that wherever we go and wherever we might be, that human being that is around us, we are called to love and do something great, do something beautiful, do something good for that person. And when we do, we are loving as God loves. Now, this is something that we always need to challenge ourselves to apply because we can kind of fall into a routine as human beings. We become habitual in our exercises and our actions, and we can even become indifferent to the opportunities that we have to love, and we can fail to love very readily. In fact, Today, we see the movement of love in the Acts of the Apostles as the travels of, of Paul and Barnabas are recorded and shared with us. Paul and Barnabas, their hearts are touched by the love of Jesus Christ, and they can't help but keep it in. They've got to go out. They've got to go spread the good news of the gospel to anyone and to everyone who will hear it, because that's the ultimate good. You are going to live the best life possible. How? When you got Jesus. When you got Jesus in your life, let me tell you, Paul and Barnabas would say, about the story of true love, that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that who should ever believe in him would have eternal life. Jesus died on the cross not simply for a mass of people, an idea of the human race in general. Jesus Christ died personally for you and for me. And so Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Will you in turn love the Lord? Love the Lord in return. And so Jesus was very, very present at the heart of Paul and Barnabas because he had changed their lives. And it was something easy for them to do. And so where did they go? They went everywhere. We hear about their missionary journeys. We hear today how they went to Lystra and then to Iconium, to Antioch. We heard how they went to Pisidia, and then to Pamphylia, and then to Perga, and then to Italia, and then they came all the way back to Antioch. They were all over the place. And in every single situation, in every single new country, new city, new community, they had the opportunity to love, love one another as Jesus had loved them. And they preached the good news. And they started to change the face and complexion of this world by bringing about the love of God. So, in looking at our own lives and how can we improve in, improve in love, we might today follow Paul and Barnabas. They were in different locations. And in, in each location, they were challenged to love. So we might compartmentalize our lives by location and thinking about the places that we go the time in the circumstances in which we find ourselves and meet other human beings. Whether we're familiar with them, we've never met them before, we know we're called to love people at every single place we find ourselves. And so to that end, we as Christians probably aren't going to find ourselves as missionaries with a capital M like St. Paul or Barnabas. We're not going to find ourselves in Australia or Asia or Africa or South America or Europe or even Antarctica. Um, we're not going to find ourselves most likely all over the world. That is a very special vocation to be a missionary. But we will find ourselves throughout our life at different places. And in those different places, we will encounter human beings. And encountering those human beings we have to ask this ourselves the question, do I bring love to this place? Do I bring love to this person? When I come to church, do I bring love to church and love to the people that are around me? When I go into the supermarket, do people encounter love? in the way that I speak with them, in the way that I interact with them. When I go to work, when I'm around other people, either clients or patrons, or perhaps my boss or fellow employees and coworkers, do they see 
the love of Jesus in me? Do they see love in my words for them? When I'm enjoying recreation, when I'm out at a party at someone's house, do people see the love of the Lord on my lips? When I'm at a football game or another type of sporting event, do people recognize me as a Christian, bringing about love to those around me? When I am at home with my family, with my spouse, when I'm with my children or grandchildren or siblings or parents, do people experience love? Do they experience patience, kindness, and generosity in how I interact with them? When I find myself at school, do people recognize there's something different about me with my peers and my classmates and how I interact with my teachers? Am I respectful and loving, deferential? Do I express goodness to those around me, to not just my friends, but to those who are ostracized as well? When I find myself out on the street and I'm walking by a stranger, do they experience love in how I look at them or fail to do so? Do they find the love of Christ in me? My friends, there are so many places that we go and we travel on a daily basis. And sometimes those people are very familiar. Sometimes those people are complete and utter strangers. But if you and I are truly Christian, we are truly disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to do one thing and one thing alone. We are called to love one another. And so I'd invite you today to think about the places you go. And in the places that you go, the people that you encounter there. And to think about, do they experience love from me? Do they see from me that I really am invested in their good and I'm doing it simply because I can, because I'm preoccupied about what's best for you? Do they see the love of Jesus in my heart and in my presence? And my friends, if we can, if we can truly live love, we will then indeed be disciples of Jesus Christ. And we will find actually that a new heaven is being created in our own midst, in our own life, in our own hearts, in the places that we go. We're already beginning to experience the renewing graces of God because God is love. And when we love, we are like God. We will then find that to experience heaven, we actually don't have to wait. We don't have to wait for that new heaven for Christ to give it to us at the end of our lives. For in fact, when we love as we're called to, selflessly, fully, generously, patiently, kindly, when we bring about the love of Christ here below, we don't have to wait to experience heaven above, for we will already then having been the actual presence of God to others who is love itself, experience a new earth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, man, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning, mindful that we are called to love and to love always, we ask for the Lord's help to increase this grace in our lives and help us to be aware of all the opportunities we have on a daily basis. For the church, that we may manifest the selfless love of Christ in the way we treat one another, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That peoples and nations may put aside their differences and disagreements and work toward creating a new earth without pain or tears, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Blessed Mother's intercession and guidance, as the church continues to walk with mothers and families in need, and continues to promote alternatives to abortion, and seek, seeks to create a culture of life, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grow the food we eat, that they may be blessed with good weather and favorable conditions as they nurture the budding life in their care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the war in Ukraine, and that Ukrainians receive the required humanitarian support and aid, and for those who have died or been injured or displaced because of the war, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that our parish community may always open the door of faith to those searching for God, searching for meaning, searching for a home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and shut-ins of the parish, that in the care they receive from family, friends, and caregivers, they may know the love of our Savior, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed, especially Joe Eckridge, that they may have eternal rest with the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For all of our intentions, spoken and unspoken, those written in our petition book, and those written in the Kateri Circle Basket, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also ask for God's special blessings on the newly ordained deacon, John Anemo, who was a transitional deacon for our diocese and was ordained to the di transitional diaconate yesterday. Um, he's a black Catholic deacon. He's from Nigeria um, and is a wonderful man with a huge smile. So hopefully at one point we'll be able to get him over here and he can preach the good word for us as Deacon Bob and I try to do our best for you every week. And so we just ask for God's special blessings upon um, Deacon John Anemu um, as he completes his final year before being ordained a priest and that he might have a fruitful mystery bringing glory to God and love um, to all of the people that he serves. For him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also in a special way, we ask for the eternal repose of the souls of those who died in the Buffalo shooting, um, for those who are injured, that God will heal them, um, and for those who have been harmed in any way um, because of this disruptive evil that has been brought upon Buffalo, for all of the people there, for their, the families who are suffering, for everyone who is in pain and anguish right now, we ask for the healing graces of our Lord and his consolation and presence to be with all of them and for an end to all mass shootings, to an end to all gun violence, to an end to all murders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good gifts. You have called us to love, which is so easy to do because you have loved us so very much. And so today, basking in your glory, basking in your love, we ask that you fill our hearts with that special grace. Help us to share it with everyone that we meet as we make all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts of bread and wine and the offerings of the community are brought to the altar, please sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, hymn number 343. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. 
But in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment and the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body, hymn number 760.
We continue our prayer of thanksgiving in song. Please sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, hymn number 435. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Today, following Mass, we're going to have our Parish Synod Listening Session. 
And that's going to commence at 11.45 a.m. And so everyone is still welcome to come and enjoy fellowship after mass. We've got plenty of donuts. But in addition to that, we also have some finger sandwiches and extra lunch type food to help those who are going to stay. But even if you're not going to stay, enjoy it, because we usually have more than enough to go around um, for the listening session. And so immediately after mass, um, up to 11.45 a.m., um, we'll continue to have coffee, donuts, and finger sandwiches um, for food and fellowship. But exactly at 11.45 a.m., we're going to transition over to our parish listening session. And so what is a listening session? Because one of our, my dear parishioners was a little bit worried um, because a lot of times when we think of listening sessions, what do we think of? We think of what we see on TV, like a town hall or open mic night where people get up in front of the microphone like... <laughs> So that's not what the Synod listening session, what our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is calling us to do. Um, I actually like to think of it as a mini retreat. I mean, it's an opportunity for us to spend some time in prayer, listening to the Holy Spirit, reflecting on our past as a church, and then furthermore, where is the Holy Spirit calling us as a church to grow? And to do that individually, but then ultimately collectively. And so the course of it is about a little over two hours long, and we have small group um, discussion and reflection, and then we have a large group gathering um, reflection as well, so that everybody can hear what the small groups you know, have been discussing. But it bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's done so for every single listening session that I've conducted. It carries God's peace, um, but also his love, you know, in this. And it's, it's a beautiful experience. So anyone who's available, even if you didn't register, um, feel free to stay with us. We're going to start that again at 11.45 a.m. And again, please, 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 you know, as our policy here, make sure no food is left behind. <laughs> so make sure at the very least you come down and enjoy some of our food. Thank you to everyone who has already contributed to our Faith and Charity Annual Appeal. Um, we're making good progress towards our goal. However, if you haven't contributed yet, um, please con prayerfully considering do so. Um, there's a lot of love that we're called to share and your love that you can give you know, financially to support this campaign, which affects, I think, over 42 ministries in our diocese, goes a long way. Not simply just trying to hit a benchmark, you know, because quite frankly, the benchmark's not that important. What's important is, are we loving our neighbor as ourselves? Are we extending that mercy to those who need it? And so if you have not picked up your Faith and Charity Annual Catholic Appeal campaign envelope, they're at the end of each one of our pews, um, but they're also at our exit. So, so please feel free to pick one of those up and to turn it into our collection or the parish office uh, as you have the opportunity to do so. We're going to have our next Holy Hour of Power. So our Holy Hour of Powers are a night of prayer um, before the Blessed Sacrament, before the consecrated host, the Holy Eucharist. Um, so we spend time in prayer with Jesus, but then we also have gospel music. And those of you who have attended it know it is absolutely amazing. And I'm already getting super excited about our next Easter Easter Holy Hour of Power, which is going to be on May 25th, Wednesday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. So please mark your calendars. If you're out, out, at all available, um, please come out um, that evening. It is absolutely amazing. I kid you not. It's, it's incredible. And really, quite frankly speaking, I don't feel bad about this. If you don't go, you really are legitimately missing out on a real spiritual moment of contact with our Lord Jesus. So, um, Please, uh, please, if you can, um, come and enjoy that. It's just, it's just an awesome experience. We are also conducting an interest survey for our religious education program. Um, we haven't had religious education in the parish for a while because of some transition issues, you know, et cetera. So we're trying to reignite that. But we want to see if our families, if our children who are in grades one through eight will be interested in doing a week-long program during the summer um, to help not only catch us up, you know, but to reestablish our faith, folk, faith formation for our youth in the parish. So if you would like your youngster um, to participate, we have a sign-up form at the entrance of our church. So as you exit today, um, please put your name and contact information so we can see whether or not that is something that we want to do as a parish, because we have enough um, of our children that are willing to participate in that. Our Sunday morning fellowship is sponsored by Jeff and Bo Flynn, and so the parish is grateful to them and for all of our sponsors for helping us to make our fellowship available. So. And then finally, to our recognitions and blessings, do we have any first-time visitors with us today? If you're a first-time visitor, please stand. We'd love to acknowledge you and welcome you. Any first-time visitors? All right, all in the family today, which is a good thing. 
Do we have any birthdays today or this week? Any birthdays today or this week? If it's your birthday, please stand. Ah, oh, Marie. So let us pray God's blessing upon Marie. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servant who recalls today the day of her birth and rejoices in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless her with your presence and surround her with your love that she may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And then finally, do we have any husbands and wives celebrating a wedding anniversary? Come on down. <laughs> wow. We got double blessings today. I love it. We're getting into wedding season, right? Brides want to get married in the fair weather in May, and so, so did our beautiful couples here. So how many years are you celebrating? 43. 43? Halbert? Mm-hmm. Halbert? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Congratulations. So, and how many years are we celebrating? 34. 34. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so let's ask God's blessing upon two of our favorite couples here. Lord of heaven and earth, creator of us all, we bless and praise your holy name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of these couples here present so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their married life, you have preserved their union. As they celebrate their marriage anniversary, increase their love for one another and bless them with good health, happiness, love, financial stability, security, and your grace. And so may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you and bless you with many more happy years of marriage life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss the wife. Happy anniversary. <laughs> now please rise for the final blessing. We love our moments of joy. God is good. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. As we go forth to share the good news of God's love, please sing, We're Marching to Zion, hymn number 706. Mm-hmm.